viewers, how are you doing today? Today we will be making a paint program in Scratch. So let's begin. First make a new project and we need a new sprite for it. We will paint one and interestingly we will make it invisible. There will be nothing inside it. Now get rid of Scratchy the cat and if you look at these green blocks, these are the pen blocks and they are not normally available when, when we open up Scratch. You have to get them by clicking on add extension button and as you can see that we have music, pen, video sensing, text to speech here and just choose pen we will be using to make our paint software. So everything starts with when flag is clicked and what we want is that we want our brush sprite to move with the mouse pointer always. So use the forever block and inside the forever block use the motion block called go to random position and choose instead of random position go to mouse pointer and as you can see that our brush sprite is moving wherever the mouse is going. Now the most important blocks inside the pen blocks are pen down and pen up. Pen down means we draw and pen up means we don't draw. And what we want our brush to do is that when the mouse button is down, we want it to be drawing and when the mouse button is up, we don't want it to draw. We use the if else block from control and inside the if condition, we are going to check if the mouse is down. We can get the mouse down block from sensing and if the mouse is down, we want the pen to be down too. And if the mouse is not down, which is the else condition, just make the pen up. So as you can see, it's drawing just fine. We can also change the pen size by a positive or negative number. That is, we can make it thicker or thinner and we can associate it with the keyboard key, like in the up arrow key. So when the up arrow key is pressed, we want to change the pen size by a positive number. We can duplicate it and associate the down arrow key to reducing the pen size, that is changing pen size by a negative number and it's working just fine. We can erase all of this by using the erase all block and we can associate it with the space bar key on the keyboard and we can put the erase all block under that condition that when space key is pressed, erase all. So I just press this, the space bar key and everything is gone. We are drawing now just fine, but we want to change the color too. And for that, I would recommend that you make a tool area where you place all your color buttons and other buttons. Okay, so just make a horizontal or a vertical toolbar. I'm making a vertical toolbar. And this is my toolbox sprite. Okay, so this is ready now. I've given it a gray stone and now I'm going to to paint the actual color buttons just a square and I'm going to resize it give it a red color red is my favorite and it will have two costumes so I will duplicate it and the first costume is the condition in which it is selected so if a button is selected, I want it to have a black outline. So I've just given it a black outline. And the not selected costume is the same. It doesn't have an outline. So I put the red button in its proper position and I'm going to name it red. And let's write some code for it. Everything starts with when flag is clicked. And I want this red, red color to be selected by default so I will switch costume to select it and to make sure that because it's the default selected color button the color should also be set appropriately inside the brush code so I will just use the set pen color block after flag is clicked and I'm going to choose the color picker tool to choose exactly the red color of the button the red button okay so now it is drawing the default color. Now we have to write the code for these color buttons. 
I will be duplicating the same code for all the other buttons too. So when a color button is clicked, what should be done? We need to make a variable called color and it should have a value. It could be a text value and we need to set it to red to the appropriate color of the spray of the color button that has been pressed. For example, if, if the green button is pressed, then it should be set to green. If the red button is pressed, it should be set to red. So I'm just going to make a variable called color and it should be visible for all sprites. We want it to be accessible inside the brush code too. So we need it to be visible to all the sprites. Okay. And we are going to set its value to red. I'm just going to duplicate the switch costume to select it because it was already in front of me. And so when a color button is pressed, we set the color to the appropriate value and we switch the costume to select it. Okay. Next, we need to broadcast to everyone, to the whole program that a color button has been selected, has been pressed. So broadcast color changed because we are, we are we will be duplicating these sprites and any color button can be pressed. So whenever it receives the color changed button, it needs to check whether it has been pressed or some other button has sent the color changed event. So it's just going to check whether the red color has been pressed or not. So we are going to use a not block from operators and we are going to check if color is red. So if not color is equal to red, just switch the costume to not selected. It means that some other color other than this color, which is red has been pressed. Okay, makes sense. It will make more sense once I duplicate it. I just duplicated it. I'm going to name it green and we are just going to give it a green color here. Make sure that both the colors have exactly the green color. So I'm just going to look at the color number. It is 31. And I'm going to give the, the not selected costume the same color as 31. Okay. So as you can see, both the selected and not selected costumes have exactly the same green color. Now, as you can see, because I duplicated the sprite, the, the same code has been duplicated inside the green code too. The only thing that has to be changed is that instead of set, setting color to red, I'm going to just set it to green. So I just need to change those text values from red to green. And I'm going to duplicate it and do exactly the same. And I'm just going to make another color called blue. Same procedure, just give it a blue color. Make sure that the blue tone value, color value is the same for both selected and not selected. So 56, correct. And make the same text value changes inside the code that is change the green color text value to blue. And we are set with our color boxes. I'm able to drag these color boxes while I'm drawing that should not be allowed. So I just need to put set drag mode to not draggable. This is inside the sensing blocks. So do this for all the color boxes. I should have done it before I started duplicating the color box. As you can see, I'm still able to drag it, but this is only for my working canvas. It will not be possible when someone is actually running my paint program. Okay. So do it for all the color boxes that said drag mode to not draggable. Okay. Coming back to our brush code, we need to have some code here for changing the pen color. Okay. Whenever a certain color is pressed, we want our pen color to reflect that color to be the same color as that color button pressed. So for, for that, we are going to write the code inside the when I receive color changed event because that's the event that is broadcasted by a color button when it is pressed. So when I receive color changed, 
I need to have an if else multiple if else blocks and inside I will just check the value of the color variable and I will set the pen color appropriately. So I just color picked it, the appropriate red color. Now inside the if block, because I have more than one color left, so I need another if else block. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a ladder also called a nested if in programming languages. So multiple ifs inside one if. If the color is green, then set color to green. For the last color, blue, we don't really need to check the value of the color variable, so we can set it to blue by default. And you can add as many colors as you want to it. Another thing which you can do is that besides the colors, you can also have an eraser button. Just draw a costume of an eraser or use an image from the internet. And the only code that you have to write for that is it's the same code as the color blocks, but the color is white for it. So it will be as if you are actually erasing the work. Simple, isn't it? And another thing you can do is that you can erase everything that was previously drawn whenever you press the green flag and you start the paint, paint program. And you can also set the pen size to default one. Another thing is that all these costumes have this black outline around them because I had duplicated the red code and it was selected by default. So I have to change it that the green and the blue are not selected by default. So switch costume to not selected for them. And our paint program seems to be working fine. It looks nice. It's drawing fine. Another thing you can do is that you can also change the transparency of the pen. If you look at the set pen color block, you can see that you have options like saturation, brightness and transparency. And if you manipulate the transparency, you can give some cool effects like make a button for a marker or a crayon and you can do a lot of fun things with it. I hope you like this class. All my classes, mental math and coding for beginners are 100% free. I will be also giving a link to my own paint project in, in the video description. Please share my video with your friends and family. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.